Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about USB OTG. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to understand USB first. Again, it's USB OTG. So you have to understand USB. So USB is U universal S serial B bus. Now, what does that mean? That simply means uh, before the USB era, there was an era of everything having their own goddamn connector. So if you are familiar with your old computers, you know there was a socket for uh, keyboard, another socket for mouse, another socket for printer, another socket for something else. So that was the mess that world used to exist in. So many companies, which included IBM, Intel and all that jazz, they came together. It's like, bro, this cannot go on. Inherently, that was limiting how many computers can be sold because, like, again, you buy a computer and everything else have to be bought unique to that system. So, and not to mention, the more stuff you have, the more expensive something is. So, uh, the adoption to improve the adoption rate, they created this universal part. So, keyboard, mouse, printer memory devices think basically pen drive and all that just all those things will be directly controlled by one system you universal part serial bus now why serial think of this way uh, the older uh, hard drives if you are familiar with that they used to have ribbon cables now these cables were fat they had multiple pins but here's the because they were parallel they were not very fast like you you will be really lucky if you got even 100 mbps so we changed that from uh, basically a parallel system to sata system basically pata to sata why serialized so this is this was a system inherently designed in such a way that we can expand it in the future so usb became ubiquitous everywhere you can see usb from power banks to laptops to computer to desktop to servers to every goddamn thing and I'm, i would not be surprised if there is a freaking actual satellite that has actual usb port in that so reality is it's everywhere so i don't have to specify that however you have to understand this aspect because usb is so old it has multiple standards now why does it have so many standards well when they built it they overbuilt it back in that day now back in that day meant 12 megabits per second yes you heard that right megabits per second that's less than nothing nowadays like that's very difficult for even modern gaming keyboard to work so you can understand people are like bro what the hell so then they created another standard usb 2.0 i'm reasonably sure almost all of my viewers are familiar with this standard you are using it there is a very good chance you already only know this standard because this standard was built in a such a enough uh, beefed up room that it had like 400 mega bits capability so which translates to around 20 to 40 megabytes now that's good enough that's at that point in time that's good enough that you can transfer big movie files from point a to point b and all that just like that's became good enough and it remained in the session for very long then people like nowadays we went from uh, megabyte size hard drives to terabyte size hard drives so people are like bro we need fatter byte so another standard was created which was usb 3 usb 3 can go up to figure uh, 5 gigabits per second or you can think of it this way up to 500 megabytes per second why is that important that is literally at the same almost the same speed as sata 3 in your computer mother so if you have a ssd or anything that is connected using sata interface to your motherboard you are getting the same throughput on your external device that's amazing that's like at that point you are like something else will be bottlenecking you not the interface and you can see that people who buy mechanical uh, external drives they always have the issues like dude it only goes to let's say best case scenario 100 to 7 uh, 100 to 150 mbps why not 500 because that actual hardware is the limiting factor the hard drive cannot go faster than that so it has many standards now here's the deal if that's what it had that would not be an issue it has multiple physical layers and protocol based layers so you can easily have a scenario where you have usb 3.0 cable usb 3.0 uh, hardware everything uh, but it will not work at the uh, right speed because the compatibility layer has an issue or sometimes it could be usb 3 you bought the motherboard that has usb port but your uh, ssd nvme ssd that is designed for the external video editors in mind it has like 10 gps which is usb 3.2 so it's like again you connect it you only get 500 mps like what the hell i paid for 1000 mps why i'm getting 500 because of the compatibility layer, because of the protocol so you have to understand there are many layers of this now most of you are familiar with the fact that there is a usb a there is a usb b there is a you know other aspects micro a micro b why the hell there are so many ports because of the architecture the architecture was created in such a way that it has host and driver roles what does that mean host simply means host is the brains of the operation basically your mouse does not do anything mouse is just a, a dumb device so to say your computer is like okay if mouse is yelling this that it means that keyboard is yelling this that means that so 
computer is brains of the operation so inherently they wanted to a system where computer is going to tell the printer bro print this so how do you make sure people do not misplug it so you created two standard uh, basically standard b and standard a so the idea with standard a was that it will always go to the host side if you have to connect it to a server server will have host if you have to connect it to uh, basically anything that's supposed to act as a host you will have the host port and if you have to connect anything that is a device port you will connect the device logic that's the reason why there is always two physical uh, different plug so you cannot cross co uh, connect them because if you did that because these cables are dumb uh, they will literally short uh, 5 volt to the ground which would be bad so for this inherent reason this inherent architecture where it has to have a host and a device it inherently requires you to have two physical systems two physical to make sure that there is never a chance where you can uh, plug a host device into a uh, basically a dumb device so to say so you otg started to came in now why otg well this is in early 2001 the fact uh, was realized that equipments are becoming more and more and more powerful and portable so what does that translate to that simply means your printer went from just a dumb box that would just print a file from computer to becoming smart enough that you can plug a pen drive to it and it will read the file and then it's going to do its thing so you're like whoa that's a completely different ballgame what if you have to connect a, let's say other devices let's say keyboard to pdas back in this we used to call them pdas and okay you want to do that and you want to use your normal keyboard how would you do that you have to some way convert your uh, basically or tell your systems it's like basically mobile phone or pda it's like bro go to host mode or bro go to uh, basically uh, student mode why because again if you are connecting your keyboard to your mobile phone mobile phone is the host but what happens if you connect your mobile phone to your computer both cannot be host one of them must be host so computer will become the host how does it manage to do that because of otg usb on the go so that's the reality the realization that in early 2000s is like okay now there are portable devices some of these portable devices are freaking portable computers and they can have the ability to host and device can be changeable so it can be like hey i'm connected to big daddy i'm like i'm i'm, I'm a student bro here and if like bro you're connecting your keyboard i'm supposed to be the big daddy i'm gonna be the big daddy so how the heck you make sure of that and why doing all that you have to be small because these are for portable devices then came usb micro b i'm reasonably sure you are familiar with this contacts and there is a very good chance you already have it somewhere uh, everywhere so this micro b was created the idea with this was that it will have another pin independent pin basically uh, anybody who's familiar with usb they know there are four cables now cable number one is ground cable number two is uh, basically data plus uh, cable number three is data minus cable number four is voltage bus basically five volts so that's how normal usb works but how the heck you gonna make sure that uh, like you know you connect something and it has to be dumb it cannot require ic and all that it has to be a dumb connector somehow this dumb connector has to tell the uh, basically device it's like bro be in host or mode or be in device mode so there is a fifth pin now this fifth pin if sorted to the ground it will act differently versus if it's shortened to the five volt it will act differently and there are other resistance value you can uh, look up the chart and they will actually tell you what it's supposed to do in order to trigger responses so this plug allowed the basically devices to be manufactured in such a way where it's like okay if your keyboard is supposed to be plugged into a mobile phone just have this pin shorted this way no logic required it's just a pin short using a register done your mobile phone is like bro this is a keyboard i am supposed to be host and then again you're gonna have a different cable it's gonna be using the same port you don't need two ports or something like same port it will like it won't be sorted it's like bro uh, it this means it's supposed to be a smart thing i'm gonna act like a dumb boy so that is the whole point of OTG. That's why there is a fifth pin, which we call ID pin. So this was uh, micro B. And this was quite successful in early days at least. And uh, it allowed the mobile devices to become host or uh, compliant devices. Basically, you can use your mobile phone. I use that my mobile phone as a basically webcam because again, the computer can detect it. It's like, bro, I'm the host. Mobile is like, okay, I got it. I'm not going to act smart. So that way things work. It's working interface. It does do what it's supposed to do. And nowadays you can even connect your old, I'm like really old laser printers and ink tank printer using normal USB system. Why? Because OTG is going to tell the mobile phone, bro, act smart and uh, for photographers the you, this sort of system where you can have direct micro file dumping ability from memory card to a mobile phone it's a uh, priceless in many scenarios simply because you, that allows you to have a another backup b uh, many times you can directly use your mobile data to back the file up so that is pricey and you can have small uh, knickknacks where you have a normal mobile phone uh, basically pen drives and all that jazz for extra data and all that so it's quite useful and for keyboard and mouse it's uh, it's known it's like it's it's a done thing
however you can understand that it's no longer that uh, you know useful we are no longer hacker type everybody is like dude give me wireless i don't want to connect 15 16 things so it, it was popular in the very early days but it's no longer like you know the sole thing that's why you will not see very high end pen drives uh, manufactured with this system backwards because demand is not that high so what we can expect in the future well future is going to be bright hopefully uh, so usb c was created now usb c had learning experience of usb 1.1 learning experience of usb 2 learning experience of usb 3 learning experience of usb 3.1 learning experience 3.34 as uh, uh, something like that so uh, this much learning experience created a standard which is completely different now it is backwards compatible so you do you can use this so but uh, USB-C itself has an independent standard. The primary standard that most people are familiar with is power delivery standard. Because uh, the role of portable devices are becoming more and more and more and more important, we're like, dude, we have to find a way to charge it properly. And this is not sustainable where every company creates their own random charger structure. It's like, oh, Snapdragon has this uh, Wululu charger, and then you have a Vivo with like Vogo charger, and it's like blah, blah, blah charger, and it's like Dash charger, and blah, blah. That, that's just unsustainable. That's just creating e-waste. So power uh, delivery standard was created. Now, power our delivery was really targeted for big things basically laptop kind of big things so inherently it can go as high as 100 watts of power let that sink in 100 watt of power from a usb cable how much is that most normal uh, basically gaming laptops are below 80 watts of power consumption unless we are talking like high end gaming one then they will consume like 130 to 200 but most laptops flat out like you just close your eye put your hand on a laptop there is a very good chance you're gonna be a laptop that's below 80 watts so 100 watt of power is a lot of power now what does that translate to well in perfect world you're gonna have a tv like this and you're gonna come home from your work you're gonna put your laptops in uh, basically table here and then you're gonna like have a laptop here the cable would be connected now here's d uh, because usb c standard learned from the basically mess of uh, micro b they created the idea of dual role basically the cable will no longer have a and b no longer a host or device the cable itself will not do anything there will be logic built into the device device will do the negotiation basically all these data pins and all that they will act as a like a mediator and they will like handshake bro handshake like basically your charger will handshake with your mobile phone if the handshake does not happen it will be like bro i'm not gonna give you 100 watt i do not know who you are i do not want to fry you so it's gonna be like that and if handshake happens correctly let's say you are connecting a laptop tv would be like bro i think it's a laptop i can send charge and it will send charge uh, handshake in layers it will not be like Ta -da. it will be like layer one layer two layer three and if all the handshake goes well then it's gonna dump the hundred now here's the the laptop can still send data through that same cable to the device and device will act as a dump in terms of data in terms of power it is the main boss but in terms of data it will become the recipient that's the ultimate goal of uh, dual role so you don't have to think about cable basically this cable you just buy this cable and you don't think about it it's like buy and forget you don't have to think about like either connecting into a power brick or connecting into a power bank you don't have to think about it so inherently all this idea of like putting this many pins all the idea of designing a standard that has independent uh, cable just literally built for power delivery that's the whole point everything in the structure is designed in such a way that if implemented correctly you don't have to think about it like buy and forget and upper limits like how far this technology can be pushed uh, imagine it this way like you can literally have a usb c cable for everything right now there are equipments that you can buy if you have a usb c standard upper limit standard basically even thunderbolt is slow, uh, slowly going to be incorporated in the USB C standard because Intel has now opened up the patents and all that jazz. So, uh, over time, you will gonna have a laptop, you're going to connect a USB C cable, and then, like, you're going to have three monitors in a network interface and everything else with one connector. Now, I have provided a video down below where you can see where you can buy this kind of stuff, and you, you may have already have a compatible laptop if you deal in high end notebooks and all that jazz. So you can understand, in the future, we don't have to think about it. We won't have multiple connectors. We'll just have one thing. That's it. Buy it, forget it. Now, be mindful, the dual roll cables are very expensive as of now. And standardization was because, again, it was designed in such a way that it would be backwards compatible. Uh, that's the inherent flaw. That's why, like, you will find, hey, this is USB-C. It's supposed to be fast. And you're like, you connect your mobile phone. It's like, bro, it's not doing that. Why? Because the cable may be just made as a charger cable. So it's like, a, it's a very dumb handshake. It will not send the full data. And sometimes you may buy a very awesome cable, then you realize, hey, wait a minute, my mobile does have USB-C port, but does not support the protocol USB 3, so the data transfer rate is not high. So there are still some growing problems, but inherently, the, in terms of design, in terms of knowledge, uh, this is built with experience, so it has a lot of potential. I can easily see a future where we simply don't give a damn about cables, it's like just connect it.
just connect like don't give it think about it just connect because it does support a display port and hdmi so you can understand it. like we can easily see a world where every cable is just usb c including power ones so this was my small video about uh, usb on the go i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i'd urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always Thanks for watching.